hard in my throat. <coughs> it's 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 hard in my throat. 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 Because I like to rock. Rock. Come on, I want to rock. Rock. I wanna, I wanna, wanna, wanna rock. Are you gonna let me spend my days in a purple haze? Mid to late 80s wow. was the glory days. Nelson and Aerosmith grinding their axes. Crotch pants, booty wow. dance, shooting on taxes. I don't wanna listen to Yanni or God. I wanna hear Eddie Way wow. with David Lee Roth. Rock. Kissing the class, the care back when rock was pure. <laughs> My guitar Rock. and I stole my mom's car, Rock. but then I realized Rock. I just smashed my guitar. Rock. How am I gonna rock now? God damn. <laughs>
history The voice is singing back to me Until I hold my hands up and say Why don't you stop and I'm paying my respects To my anatomy Couldn't help it Water, water everywhere But not a thought to think See him running from the porch Like some kind of human torch Orange tendrils everywhere Acrid stench of burning hair Flailing like a drowning bird In the dirt he scrawls this word O-H-M-Y-G-O-D-I-M-O-N-F-I-R-E Oh, 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 oh,
Tokyo Narita. Tokyo Narita. Tokyo Narita. is ready.
Those are a definite strength. You stink it! You stink it! Since 1942 and before, Farkle has been an international institution known worldwide for its endurance, reliability, celery smell, and freshness in the face of adversity, mold, concrete, Dostoevsky, ready-made pie crust, tackle box, and reducing swelling in children ages 14 to 86. Farkle was history in the making. Why, even Farkle's late creator, the late creator of Farkle, used to say... I forgot what I was going to say! It was quite funny, though. An amusing anecdote! Yes, as our American boys marched off to war, marching over land, marching overseas, and marching in the air, Farkle and Farkle commercials kept their spirits alive and sparkling clean. Why, here's an old Farkle commercial from the old days of black and white right here! Yes, friends, the year is 1942 and before. Adolphus Hitler and his mighty army of nasties are rising up, and Farkle is cheaper than ever. Buy it today and save a lot of hassle. And now, frozen in this block of ice, is the creator of Farkle himself. Would you say a few words for us here today? Now, right this moment, here's the microphone. Here, go ahead. I forgot what I was going to say. It was quite funny, though. An amusing anecdote. As most of you know by now, Farkle is the best. Keep one in the icebox to prevent freezer burn. It's not only the leading brand in blind taste tests, but deaf people really like it, too. Great for those embarrassing carpet stains. Perfect onion flowers every time. Just Farkle and forget it. Keep one in the icebox to prevent freezer burn. So long, Mr. Pizza Face. Later. But Farkle, you'll never have to say chronic halitosis again. Comes with hooks, always flaky, never dry. And I don't even have kids. Keep one in the icebox to prevent freezer burn. But enough about Farkle. Let's see what our celebrity spokesfigment, John John the Leprechaun, has to say about Farkle. I'm John John the Leprechaun. Top of the morning to ye and your kin. Why, when it comes to Farkle, I've only one regret. And that's that I've but one Farkle to give for me country. However, in lieu of giving up me Farkle, I'm gonna shoot myself out of this big humongous cannon. If this were a television commercial, you'd be able to see some fine print right now that reads... Highly paid spokespeople for Farkle, members of the Actors Guild. And now, here are some completely unpaid random people like you and your mother who just love Farkle. Yar! Twenty years ago, the great white Farkle took my leg in a mighty struggle. In a morbidly ironic twist, though, I've used nothing but Farkle and Farkle products to upkeep my new pig leg. Yar! Thank ye, Farkle. Farkle is the best thing that I ever tasted! It's better than water, and it's better than glue. I love Farkle. I spread it all over my body. Just take a look here. (laughs) 
That was nice. Lose in the bar. The ring in the bar. Farkle is the best. My house is made of Farkle. Give me the bar. Automobile beef transistor. And now, here's some unedited testimony from Mr. P. Willikins from Nova Scotia. Recently, my dog Flowers died. But you know what? I keep him in my fridge. But now, thanks to Farkle and Farkle Byproducts. What better way to preserve old flowers? I really love my dog. And we're all very, 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 very sad. And you know what? It's gone, folks. My dog, it's gone. I like my dog. But now, it's gone, folks. My dog, it's gone. I can keep him preserved as ever. And I would hate to see him go. Well, thanks to Farkle, my dog can save all the space I like. And to tell you the truth, I really love Farkle. Farkle! You can live without it, but why would you want to? Chuck those old records, clean out your cattle brands, and make the bed for... Farkle! I mean, Farkle. Some restrictions may apply. Supplies are limited. Please allow 68 weeks for delivery. Sold by weight, not by shoe size. Do not overinflate. Lift Farkle with your back, not with your legs. Some sizes, shapes, colors, flavors, dimensions may have settled during delivery. Farkle is not to be used as a flotation device. Farkle may cause irregular bowel movements accompanied by oily discharge and an inability to control them. You do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. See your doctor if you're sick. A termite walks into a bar and says, "Is the bartender here?" Do not fold, spindle, or mutilate unless prompted by the proper authorities. Direct misuse of Farkle constitutes a direct misuse of Farkle. I think your mother's calling you. 250% of the proceeds from the sale of Farkle go to the Help Save the President of Farkle Industries Fund. Have your pets spayed or neutered or both or neither or one or the other or don't do either if you don't want to or if you're not sure whether you have a pet. Some restrictions may apply. Visit our website at www.dibbly-dibbly-dibbly-ding-dang.org.farkle.dibbly-doo-dog-dappity-pongo-mcmong.com. <laughs> and they all lived happily ever after. The end. I, uh, I have a little... Uh, I, I just think we need to go back to our, our childlike days. As children, we had never gone on to put limits around things. I'm on the phone with her And she says she is tired Of being unpredictable She's going to go to Portland She's going to go away I don't care if she's crazy I heard lycanthropy is curable It takes a bull Says 
This is the thing that took me by complete and utter surprise. I saw my hands on television, and they were not their normal size. They were not their normal size. This is the thing that made me stop and check my pockets again. I heard the voices come from my wallet. A 20 arguing with a 10. They were not their normal sins. They were not their normal sins. It is very likely that you have subconsciously helped to create this situation. To balance something you've done in the past. They were not their normal sounds. They were not their normal sounds. On television. Oh no, I ain't got a job. I ain't got a car, I ain't got a dime to my name I ain't got a girl, I ain't got a home And I need to shave my ears a job? Do you have a car? Do you have a dime to your name? No, I ain't got a... Do you have a girl? Do you have a home? Do you need to shave your I certainly do. Ain't got a job. Certainly do. Look at all that hair in your ears. I'm standing on my head. My feet are in the air. I see my feet and they are in the air. I'm standing on the ground. My feet are on the ground. I see my feet and they are on the ground.
The sun is very bright today and still the clouds are big and gray. upon your face is from the depths of outer space a billion years from western avenue my emotional survival depends on your arrival right hand on the bible do you solemnly swear that you'll keep our agreement to meet me on the pavement to come to my apartment at the top of the stairs I'll sing a little breakup song until I see you come along or maybe I will write that song for you and then a circuit in my brain will explode and there you'll be again Sudden connection, a flying sensation, a little celebration as I crumple to the ground, a painful situation followed by the realization that there's a somber congregation. Hey, Sid? Sid? Yeah, what is it, kid? You want an autograph? Well, sure, but I was wondering if I could ask you a question. Hand me that pen there. I'll sign your napkin. Uh, here you go. What's your name? Logan. To Logan. Thanks for bothering me after my piano act and making me miss my bus home. O-M-E. Sidney J. Scheinberg. E-R-G. Thanks. Anyway, about that question... I know what you're gonna ask, so don't even bother. Here, let me sing you a song about it before the bar closes here. <clears throat> okay, the Charge Conjugation Parity Violation Song by Sidney J. Scheinberg. I... Two, but, uh, three. There's matter in my trousers. There's matter in my hair. There's so much freaking matter, it's damn near everywhere. What isn't making sense to me is how it all got there. But seriously, what puzzles me is why I even care. Physicists love symmetry. It's simple and it's nice. For explaining all phenomena, just a couple rules suffice. But when you get down small enough, it's very plain to see that certain little particles create asymmetry. Charge conjugation, parity violation, a mystery to all involved. 
It might explain asymmetry and help us all begin to see just how this universe evolved. Charge conjugation is basically the process by which you turn a particle into its opposite or antiparticle. Positive becomes negative, negative becomes positive, you know, charge conjugation. And parity, well, all that is is just a particle's position in space, where it is, x, y, z coordinates, you get me? I, okay, uh, well, when you have particles decaying, you should have just as much matter created as antimatter, antimatter being the opposite of matter. Well, the antiparticle usually does the exact opposite of what the particle does, you see. So its position and charge will be opposite, thus the law of CP symmetry. But matter and antimatter would have to be created in equal amounts, right? Cancel each other out, conservation of matter can't create stuff out of thin air, right? Right, okay. But just look around here, what have you got? Matter. Whole buckets full of the crap. Where's the antimatter? It's not here. Pretty much the only place we can see it is when we make it ourselves by smashing particles up in proton colliders. That's funny, there should be just as much antimatter as there is matter. But we don't know for sure if there are whole galaxies of this stuff floating out there farther than we can see, but it's pretty unlikely. So where's the fundamental asymmetry? Now, sometimes, and this has been observed, when a K meson, or K on as the kids are calling it, decays, you get a CP violating asymmetrical result where the antiparticle behaves differently than it is supposed to. The K on, instead of decaying into a 2 pion group and a 3 pion group, which would be a symmetrical law-abiding result, it will decay into two two pion groups. What the hell? Don't ask me about that now. We don't know why it happens, but it does. So here's this asymmetrical reaction stuck in the middle of all our beautiful symmetry, okay? Now, apply this asymmetrical tendency to the first few seconds after the Big Bang, round about the vacuum era. Who knows? Maybe this could help explain why there's so much matter around here, but no antimatter. Say, Charge conjugation, parity violation, a mystery to all involved. It might explain asymmetry and help us all begin to see just how this crazy universe evolved the way it did. Does that answer your question? No. Well, it's all theoretical.